Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's Kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Embark on a journey to claim new spiritual territories. In Taking Over Territories, Apostle Joshua Selman reveals strategies for expanding God's kingdom. Learn how to navigate spiritual landscapes with divine guidance and wisdom. Empower yourself to break through limitations and establish God's presence in every area of life. Step into your destiny and transform the world around you, equipping you to take over and transform territories. It takes warfare to dislodge these controlling powers. Mark chapter 5. Let me show you something. Mark chapter 5. Permit me, it's a reading that is a bit long. We'll start from verse 1. Please follow this. These truths are scattered all through scripture. And they came over to the other side of the sea. In fact, let's, we'll, we'll get back to Mark chapter 5. Let's, start, let's take the account of Luke. Luke chapter 8. Let's start from 22 so that you will understand the context. Luke chapter 8, 22. Now watch this. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said to them, Let us go onto the other side of the lake. And so they launched forth. They wanted to make advancement. And the first thing that happened was as they, as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a what? Help me please. A, a storm of wind. What kind of description is that? It didn't say there came a wind. A storm of wind. On the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. 24. And they came in and awoke him saying, Master, we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind. And the raging of the water and it ceased and they were calm. You would think Jesus just spoke to the wind. He knew what he was speaking to. Are we together now? Now let's go to Mark chapter 5 and verse 1. It's still the same rendition but I just want us to see the account of Mark. Mark chapter 1. 5, sorry. Mark 5, 1. And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Uh -huh. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately, who came? There met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. Question. The Bible says the man dwelt in mountains. Who told him Jesus was coming? As soon as Jesus went to the other side, the first person to meet him was not the mayor of the city. The first person, remember there was a voice terror storm. They were the controlling powers over that territory. Knowing that a man was coming to the other side to dislodge the gates of darkness. Understand the spiritual progression. The winds, you would call it a situation. The same way you plan to relocate to Lagos and lost your job. What is going on here? What suddenly happened? controlling powers we take territories when we understand the warfare dimension of prayer there is the intercessory dimension of prayer there is prayer commanding petitions but there is the art of spiritual legislature we call it warfare mm. manipulating spiritual possibilities to align themselves to God's will mm. verse 3 the Bible says, who had his dwelling place among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been oft bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs. Notice this. Look at how Satan destroyed gathering. Number one, the controlling spirit found the spiritual voice that would later be the evangelist over that land and captured him. 
and the legion dwelt in him took him to the mountains and kept him there controlling powers Jesus says let's go to the other side and situations begin to happen in a strange way and he rebukes it and then as soon as he arrives he meets a madman and hear what the madman says verse 6 but when he saw Jesus he ran and worshipped him 7 and he cried with a loud voice saying now listen please what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not 8 for he said come out of the man you know the unclean spirit and all of that 9 and he asked what is your name and he said legion for we are many 10 and he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the territory territory Jesus do whatever you will do but don't take us out of this territory we dwell here we have grown with the people we manipulate their minds we are responsible for the widespread poverty we are responsible for the women working for the men we are responsible for the inexplainable patterns I ministered in a crusade some years ago quite a while in Shiroro and I saw a situation that disturbed me I saw many women at least I'm not exaggerating I'm not exaggerating sincerely at least 16 or 17 deaf and dumb and they said the moment they gave birth like a woman goes to the labor room and gives birth she becomes deaf and dumb in a strange way so the pastors were trying to bring their members to just sit down and when I prayed for one two I said no this is not a an issue of healing there are controlling powers listen when you see similarities in outcomes stop focusing on the individual cases there are controlling powers responsible for that the warfare dimension of victory believers do not understand this there is no gate there are gates that don't open they are broken he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder ask any man who has attained a level of influence in any field if he's honest with you he will tell you he knows what he did whether it's in music like like pastor nathaniel whether it is in business they will tell you you heard him just talking about um um you know zenith bank and all of that now you will not see that part on tv i walked for more than one hour on the streets of zaria from a point in town until i get to another town i was praying in tongues and speaking over the city i command the forces the forces that come with the north and boy they are strong forces let me tell you this anybody who has risen beyond the level because you see it's like a spiritual meter in the realm of the spirit once you oscillate within a particular threshold the realm of the spirit will not disturb you but hit a mark and let your voice rise and they know that this voice is becoming global someone will visit you from gathering and say where did you say you are going to hallelujah I remember when when I started ministry in Zaria a number of people called me and said man of God your grace is more than this city what is where is Lagos Abuja I mean US UK which one is Zaria I said God just told me this is where I'll be in this season and they said nobody will hear you I said so you say 
but the realm of the spirit is powerful listen if you know what to do my brothers and my sisters your life will become an unending wonder i am telling you stop focusing on just the physical things that are happening things are controlled from the realm of the spirit it was the gods of the Medes and the persians that ruled over babylon it was not nebuchadnezzar and when they saw that daniel was becoming a threat the way this man would rise they used the parliament to say the only thing we want you to stop is prayer for 30 days that's it don't stop any other thing just make sure prayer how can a parliament come together to meet to stop one man prayer they didn't say we'll attack daniel they just said this is our deliberation as the politicians in babylon we have observed but it was the spirits of the medics and the Persians. and let me tell you what daniel did huh. i love daniel the first thing he did was to open the window towards jerusalem listen there are times that you have to pray connecting to covenants let me teach you something about the warfare dimension of prayer there are three ways to receive from the anointing of god listen number one is through a personal encounter your personal encounter with god allows you to receive certain dimensions of his anointing number two there your obedience to principles enshrined in principles is a dimension of god's power but number three your alignment to covenants this is the third way we access very strange dimensions of liftings god has sworn with certain men on earth and put his integrity upon their lives and you can leverage on the covenant that speaks remember when the temple in jerusalem was being dedicated are we still together this night solomon prayed a prayer after they offered the bond offerings and he said oh god whoever prays facing jerusalem he didn't say the prayer is accurate the moment they face jerusalem my covenant is that please hear them Daniel knew that he was in a state of emergency there's no room for trial and error of spiritual accuracy he said open the window let me face Jerusalem because this issue requires an alignment to covenant are we together Goliath was not a giant Goliath was the bodily representation of a spirit and so when david came to fight goliath saul didn't say where were you trained he said whose son are you in other words let me see the tribe you come from because i understand that like minerals there are spiritual allocations to tribes when haman went to discuss with his wife about his embarrassment in the palace the wife asked him one question she said what is the name who are you fighting he said esther he said you are finished esther is a jew her man your doom has come in other words didn't you have the brain to know you don't fight them mm. are we together when when satan and archangel michael began to fight over the body of moses notice that satan looked at lucifer and said the lord rebuke you he didn't say i rebuke you he didn't fight because the rankings you see the realm of the spirit i hope you know that lucifer's office was the son of the morning are we together he was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom and even in his fallen state that there is a regard for that ranking that's why the bible says jesus is the head of principalities he recognizes their existence he says he's head of them they are there you cast demons you don't cast principalities go and read your bible that's why you cannot cast a devourer no you don't cast it by saying go there are principles these are the kinds you overcome by the blood not every kind go. listen watch this please come come sir are you following me this night let's assume no no this, this is a lady please go back I, what i want to 
Let's assume, God forbid, huh? just an example. Let's assume this guy is a thief. Are we together? Trying to boggle my house. The moment you hear the sound of my voice, what would you do? You will run away because you are a thief. But let's assume someone sold my house to you and you pay. Will you run away when I'm coming? No. It will take a lawyer to settle the matter. There are things that don't go just because you say in Jesus' name. Now, these are the forces that we engage with intelligence. Jesus did not cast sin out of you. As powerful, this is the word becoming flesh. And yet he did not cast that nature in his name. Listen, there are mysteries behind territories. There are controlling powers. Where I come from, you don't last in ministry up to three years. There are many great voices that have come from my region, but you don't last up to three years. A scandal or something terrible must bring you down. Three years is a lifespan of impact. There are music ministers in this country who do not understand this. And you see that they rise. And respectfully speaking, they go down never to rise again. For some reason, new songs never come again. For some reason, what makes me celebrate one album and then I ignore you? Oh dear. They know not. Neither will they understand. There are preachers, you see this thing happen. For five, six months, everybody is placing a demand on your grace. You are everywhere. And then, it dies. That's it. You fade and look like the city. Because you see, these controlling powers have a bodily reflection of themselves on a city. So when you come, they turn you to look like the city. There are people who come into cities, millionaires. In six months, things begin to happen until they look like the city. They will tell you, I've been in the U.S. for 25 years. And you say, you look like you've never seen how an airport looks like. Say, I've been there. I ate with this. See the photos. The city turned them so. Listen, there are controlling powers. When I stood here and I was speaking to the gates, and it was not just some ritual. There are real forces. It was our father in the faith, Bishop Oyeliko, that said one time when the church in Kaduna was not growing, I told you that there are territories. For some reason, he came out and was praying and said, God, why is this happening? And according to him, he said, the Lord asked him to come out. And then he looked up. When he looked up, he saw that there was a thick layer over the place. He said, this is a blindfolding layer that misrepresents you. And then he prayed and did something over it. It folded and the ministry opened. Whatever happens on earth is the receipt from what just happened in the realm of the spirit. Transactions happen in the realm of the spirit. Jesus is about to wield a dimension of dominion and Satan meets him and says three temptations. Number one was the issue of hunger. You are hungry. Turn this stone. Notice that every time men were to take territory like the madman in Gadara, Satan left the whole earth and was fasting with Jesus. He was there. Jesus didn't fast alone. Satan was there with him. As soon as he finished, Je Satan said, I'm here. You are hungry. Turn this stone to bread. And then he overcame that temptation. Then he took him to a holy city and said, fall. And then the third temptation, he said, look, I know you are here for territory. Let's negotiate. Let me show you the glories of the world. I place all the men there. Bow to me. We'll finish it here. But you will see the result when you go down. Bow to me. We will negotiate it in the realm of the spirit. And then you will see the result down. Please listen to me. If the forces that stand against your destiny are not dealt with, a territory will not receive you. Now, let me say this, and I say it with all humility. I say this with all humility. People look at me and say, Apostle, there is no territory that has rejected you. You are loved in the east. You are loved in the west. You are loved in the north. Even in my own home, where they say prophets are without rewards, there is a reward in my own home. And I say, you think it just happened? No. 
Is someone learning something today? We have been focusing on the wrong things. The story behind this place is more than the intelligence of a man. It is the power of subduing spiritual forces. I believe this with all my heart. The warfare dimension of prayer. Someone needs to take out time after tonight and say, Lord, why the moment your voice is silenced, let me just tell you what to do so you don't waste your time. Just know there are controlling powers stopping your voice. And you are going to have to pray your heavens opened and dislodge the forces that command the nations to not hear you. Was there not an instruction, hear ye him? That was why I was declaring. I said, Lego, hear ye, house of David. There are people here who have businesses that this country should hear. But your business is only accepted within your local territory. Even Abel Okuta here, it will push your products back to Lagos. It is not receiving you. Because the forces that control these territories need to be dislodged. Are we together? Notice that the only reason why they invaded Jericho was to destroy it and move. They didn't take anything. They didn't fight anyone. Why will you destroy a land? Can't you just pass them and go? Because Jericho was not just a building. It was an altar. And they brought it down and continued moving. Is someone getting what I'm telling you? This has nothing to do with being a minister, being a business, but if you are a minister, your land is in Lagos, but you may never get it. Why? Because there are controlling powers. Your house is in Lagos, but you may never get it. Your, there is space for your business in Lagos. Parking out is not the solution. Insist till your space is given you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Territory. The power and the warfare dimension of prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul was teaching in Ephesus. And this is what he had to say. Ephesians chapter 6 and please verse 12. He says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Paul now is teaching a very balanced gospel. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, he said. Against powers. Against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness that operate from the heavenlies please they are real listen to me my brothers and my sisters let us not fool ourselves they are real it is true in as much as there is a system in the kingdom to stand in victory above them you 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 will be joking to ignore this reality And Satan is very patient. He can allow you to be flattered by your ignorance for many years and strike you in one day to return to your past. It's too risky to not know some things. Territories, 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 territories. Hallelujah. So it's important for you to understand tonight that both physical and spiritual territories are contended for. There's no time I would have shown you how they possessed all the lands that God gave them. You have to study these things in the Bible. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. We study these things not just to preach but to understand the systems of God. That when you are about to take territories, the first thing is not to look for the owner of the land. The first thing is to dislodge the principalities because the real owner of land is God. The earth is the Lord. Everybody met land. Your landlord is a steward that is at the mercy of your intelligence. Are we together? Yes. He told Jeremiah. Let's read from chapter 1 
and verse 5 and then we're done with this we'll touch one more and we're done for this night Jeremiah 1 and verse 5 Before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee And before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee And I ordained thee to be a prophet to territories A prophet to territories 6 Verse 6 now then Jeremiah began to talk and say, Ah, I'm a child. And then he rebuked him and said, Do not say you are a child, but whatever he instructs you to say, he says that which you will say. Go to verse 9 now. And then he says, Do not be afraid of their faces. Verse 9, if you can find it there. For I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. Verse 9. The hand of the Lord touched my mouth and he said, I have put my words in your mouth. We are reading to verse 12. See, Makatos Kapranda Someone received this. He says, See, this day I have set thee. I have set thee. I have set thee. Not later. See, this day I have ordered. It's an ordination. I have set thee over nations and over kingdoms. We don't just rise in this kingdom. We are ordained into dimensions. It is true. See, I have set thee. God is allocating land as if two people are playing a chess and discussing. You, I increase your spiritual border. Take this. Take that. See, this day I set thee over nations, over territories. Oh, fearful is a man. Who has sorted this out in the realm of the spirit. You will pray for his fall. And you will waste your time for nothing. You will find reasons. And it will look unfair. But you will continue to rise as if Satan does not exist. Why? Because the controlling powers have been settled. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? There needs to be a register you must sign in the realm of the spirit. As proof. Triumphant. You have to learn to pray. Shakos kaparakata. Likonda skeparuta skeparikata. You pray your way out of mediocrity. Otherwise, sentiments will kill you. Tribal affiliations will bring you down. All those things are puppets. The real things are the controlling powers. They will say it's because you are not a northern man. Because you are not a southern man. Because you are not an eastern man. Who said so? When the man's ways pleases the Lord. There is a grace that defies rejection. Apostle, my product does not go out of Lagos. It's a nice product. It can go far because you are only a businessman. When you become a spiritual man, the gates will be opened. Lift up your heads, he said. All ye gates and be ye lifted. O ye ancient doors. The doors were not made by carpenters. The doors are spirits. Let the king of glory leave this realm of Hades back to the earth. And the gate said, who is this king of glory? Why should we open the gates? You speak to those gates. Open up because it's time for a territory to hear my voice and they will reply you. Why? Are you the only pastor in Lagos? Are you the only are you the only graduate? Why should they open? Have you not seen 12 graduates in your family queuing up for relevance? Please, I want you to understand what I share with you tonight, and you will surprise yourself. There will be no limits to your rising. There are real forces. There are real forces. Hmm. Influence is not accidental. Influence is more than principles. You must subdue controlling powers. Hmm. They use men. They use systems. They use structures. They use religion. But they are spirits. 
they come in different form but they are spirits did you hear what i said the person hating you in the office is not the issue it's your it's your not understanding that men are puppets they are victims of the spirits that manipulate them so when david stood before goliath he was nodding at a mass a mass of human size and says mr man you are already dead you are just standing before me you are representing a spirit i dealt with already you come to me with your bows and spears but i come to you by a covenant that already killed you any part of goliath that stone hit would have still killed him it was not about the forehead please hear what i tell you this world is a wicked place nobody will just like you by intention our world is selfish our world is sentimental I, I i i i don't mean to be a bearer of bad news but wake up and understand the world we are living in nobody will just like you for nothing the u.s receive you who do you think you are uk receive you billy graham was allowed to preach in north korea it's a grace Someone needs to get that grace this night. Lord, why is a territory rejecting what I represent? Why is my song not rising to the nations? Why are my products not going far? Why is my certificate returning back? Because you are only sending a... Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.